Gluten Talk, today I want to show you how bakeries are baking fake sourdough bread. In the previous video I showed you how to make sourdough spice at home. And then I showed you how to bake using the cheapest flour that you can find. So we have all the bases now to make a fully 100% fake sourdough bread. I'm adding around 100 grams of sourdough spice. And just from the smell, this really smells like an excellent sourdough bread, just very, very concentrated. Then I'm adding 300 grams again of the cheapest flour that I could find. This is cake flour, a very finely ground flour. Eight grams of salt. And this is where the magic comes in. The sourdough here is inactive. It doesn't do anything anymore, but this yeast now, this yeast is going to provide all that leavening power. So you can write sourdough on it, but there's actually not really much happening from the sourdough perspective. The fermentation, what makes the bread fluffy, that's all this commercial yeast. And then another 260 grams of water. Then I'm eating this until I see it's nicely homogenized and let's go of the bowl. Well, the dough is a little too crumbly, so I'm adding some more water. Dough has been kneaded. So this flour just doesn't hold together as nice as other stronger flour. You can see how it really quickly starts to tear here and there and also feels overly <laughs> sticky. Probably I use a little bit too much water now, but still. Normally I extract a small piece like this, which, which, which would tell me exactly when the fermentation is done. Once this doubled in size, this is typically good for a sourdough based dough. But in this case, I'm just going to be eyeballing it with a yeast based dough. It doesn't matter so much. You can ferment for a little bit longer without any issues. One last note here on the dough. This is one of the learnings that I want you to take away from this video. When you bake with a new flour, you always have to play a little bit with the water level. I originally used a little bit too less water. I'm going to be sharing all the details of the final dough in the description. But then by noticing the consistency, I would say that this dough now looks very, very nice. This is going to make us an excellent bread. And now let's shape our dough. You can see it has nicely increased in size. It's a little bit puffy. Let's do it. Sprinkling some flour here on top. And this is our shaped dough. I'm quite shocked by this flour, actually, how little gas it retains. Uh, this dough really deflated a lot during shaping. Normally, this doesn't happen as much to me. I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit at room temperature, and then this is gonna go into the fridge overnight. This is our dough ready to be baked, and let's bake this now. I'm very excited to taste this. Ta-da! Here we go, our beautiful looking fake sourdough bread. This looks like an excellent sourdough bread. This smelled like an excellent sourdough bread, but actually it's fake. The crumb is not as open as it could be. I think I need to revise this recipe one more time, probably, but still for making a sandwich bread, this is perfect. Let's now taste this. Sour smell. So after eating almost the full slice now, I gotta say that this is a little bit of a roller coaster of different flavors. It's a little bit sour, then you have a little bit of a crust, you have fluffiness in your mouth. Great place with textures. I think this is a great bread. Does it taste 100% exactly like a sourdough bread? Not yet. We might have to do even a few more additional tweaks. But still, if you're not an expert, so if you've never eaten real sourdough bread, then you'd probably very much think that this is a sourdough bread. So I think in that regard, we accomplished our mission. So that's how fake sourdough bread is made. Retrospectively, I should have probably used a little bit less dry yeast. I used 0.5% calculated based on the flour, but if you want to be allowed to label your sourdough bread as sourdough bread, pure sourdough bread, then it should be more like 0.2% a 
at least that's the European regulation. The bread that I showed you earlier at the start wasn't labeled as pure sourdough bread. But I find that totally crazy. The ones that are can contain 0.2% dry yeast. And in that case, most of the fermentation is still coming from the dry yeast. So it's not a real sourdough bread. Please always check the packaging. You don't want to see any yeast on it. I think this was a really eye-opening experiment. I hope that you learned something new. I would be very curious to know whether you still buy bread at the stores. What do you look out for? Please share a comment in the comment section. You get a chance to win one of those cool pizza shirts. Thank you very much for watching and as always, may the gluten be with you.